cold open. Today, we all know Jimmy Butler as a superstar and the owner of the fourth highest scoring game in NBA playoff history. But what you didn't know is that Butler, at 13 years old, was homeless. Jimmy's road to the NBA is one of the toughest and craziest stories you'll ever hear. And it's why he's one of the toughest and coldest mother effers in the NBA today. I don't like the look of you. You have to go. Those were the last words Jimmy Butler heard from his mother as he was kicked out of the house. Butler never met his father. He had no close relatives. And after his mother kicked him out, Jimmy was only 13 years old. He was wow. homeless, broke, and alone. It was a gut-wrenching reality that would crush most 13-year-olds, but Jimmy wow. never wanted to feel like a victim. He simply picked up all of his stuff and slept on his friend's couches. He would usually stay with somebody for one or two weeks, and when he didn't have a place to stay, he wandered the streets of Tomball alone. His grades were terrible because he had to worry about where he would eat and sleep. School simply yeah, wasn't more a important. priority. And if you think <laughs> it was basketball, that wasn't Jimmy's priority either. Butler loved to play basketball, and he'd spend a lot of time in the playgrounds, but he was only five foot three, and he wasn't the most talented. Despite the lack of talent, Jimmy had something that made him special an incredible will to compete and win at all costs. So, as it. Jimmy grew yeah. taller and his skills improved, he became a known name on the streets of Tomball. Then, one day, a kid by the name of Jordan Leslie would change Butler's life forever. Jordan had heard about Jimmy, so when he saw him on the court, Leslie challenged him to a three-point shooting contest, and the two immediately struck up a friendship. When Jordan found out about Jimmy's life situation, he invited him to sleep over at night. Uh, until a week and then a month. At first, Jordan's mom, Michelle Lambert, was reluctant to let Jimmy stay because she had four kids of her own with her first husband, plus three others from her second marriage. Jesus! However, Jordan and whoa! Whoa! What the f Why has he got seven kids? My God. All their children liked Jimmy. So he soon came over again, and this time he stayed a bit longer. Michelle Lambert wasn't thrilled about having another mouth to feed, especially not a 17-year-old teenager who used to wander the streets at night. You know, people say, you just pick a child you don't even know. He brought more to us than ever Aww. we could bring to him. That's them. That's family. That's what that is. That's, that's our blood. Well, I feel like family is who you love. Jimmy finally had a home and a family. They accepted me into their family. And it wasn't because Aww. of basketball. Michelle was just very loving. She just did stuff like that. I couldn't believe it. For the first time in his life, he had a structure, responsibilities, and a curfew. His grades improved, and he wasn't walking the streets alone at night, getting into trouble. Still, it wasn't Jimmy. like his new family made him into a basketball superstar. In fact, it was the opposite. Since he always had bigger things to worry about, Jimmy didn't give his basketball future much thought. He was just playing for fun, and he never even played AAU tournaments. But when he was a high school senior, Jimmy's winning mentality and leadership skills made him a team captain. With 20 points and 9 rebounds on average, he was named to the All-District First Team. However, for the college scouts and coaches who usually hang around AAU circuits to recruit their players, Jimmy was a virtual nobody. When Butler graduated, he was ranked as the 73rd best player, but wow. not on the national level. Jimmy was viewed as the state 73rd level? best player in the state of Texas. Offers from the Whoa. best NCAA universities never came. And one of the few that had arrived was from Tyler Junior College, a two-year community college. Playing at the JUCO level usually means falling even deeper into basketball anonymity. But when his back is against the wall, Jimmy doesn't feel pressure. He thrives under it. In his first game at Tyler, he scored yeah. 34 points. He had a couple of 30- and 40-point games throughout the season, and he finished his freshman year as Tyler's leading scorer, with 18 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. His good play was finally noticed by major colleges, and Butler chose Marquette, but not because of their basketball oh, yeah. program. He went there because of their academics, as he wanted to get an education to get a regular job at Marquette University. He actually faxed his letter of intent from a local McDonald's. And after a couple of months at Marquette, <laughs> Jimmy wanted to quit and return home to Tomball. He missed his family, he didn't play much and only averaged five points per game, and he constantly got yelled at by Coach Buzz Williams. He watched me play. The very first thing he said to me was, Jimmy, you suck. I was like, oh, I don't even know you. Like, I don't, you know, like, I'm a kid. I've never been harder on a player than I've been on Jimmy. I was ruthless with him because he didn't know how good he could be. He'd been told his whole life he wasn't good enough. What I was seeing was a guy who could impact our team in so many ways, Buzz Williams. But after his teammate Wes Matthews got drafted into the NBA, Jimmy's perspective.
perspective changed. Matthews told Jimmy that he had the talent to make it, which turned a switch in Butler's head. Wesley Matthews there came we back. Go. I was like, yo, you can play in the league. That's when I really started taking basketball for real, for real. Well, not Europe pro, nothing's wrong with that. Yeah. But like the NBA, like that's where you want to be at. That's the best of the best. He quickly became the hardest worker Coach Williams had ever seen. And he blossomed from a role player to a star of the team. It's been such a great trait for him is his intelligence. He completely understands the next play. I don't know much about Jimmy Butler before he came to the league, to be fair. I knew he went to Marquette, but didn't know nothing. He's one of my favorite players, but I, you just follow the NBA career, not before that usually. He's able to think the next pass uh, and react accordingly. Jimmy's hot head, which was his biggest weakness, became his biggest strength. He took criticism with no ego and analytically thought about what he did wrong and how to improve. As a senior, Butler averaged 15 points and six rebounds per game, which doesn't sound like a lot and it isn't, but if you watched Jimmy play, there was so much more to his game than can be shown through statistics. On a team with no real scoring talent, Jimmy pushed Marquette to the Sweet 16, simply because he was a bulldog who never stopped fighting. You know, I have to be that leader. I have to be that guy. They lost that game. It's all on Jimmy Butler. They win the game. I don't want to be that guy to be like, yeah, I'm the one that won us the game because it wasn't me at all. It was it was us. It was all of us. When he entered the 2011 NBA draft, Jimmy impressed every general manager with his tenacity on the court and his character off it. Nearly all the GMs said that he was one of the most impressive young men they'd ever met. But despite all of Jimmy's qualities, he was still a diamond in the rough because he had no outside shot and mediocre ball handling skills. So he dropped all the way I mean, to the end of the first round, where he was finally crazy, selected by, by the, the Chicago way. Bulls. 2011 draft, the Chicago Bulls select Jimmy Butler from Marquette University. Oh, yeah. Instantly, I started in tears with my mom because all the people that tell me that oh, I wouldn't amount to anything, that I wouldn't get my degree, I wouldn't go to college, I couldn't be an NBA player. But more than anything, it was I proved myself right. I could care less about proving them wrong. The Bulls coach, Tom Thibodeau, viewed him as a workhorse and an energy guy with no intention of giving him anything more than garbage time minutes. And just like on all the other stops in his basketball journey, Butler had to scrap, claw, and fight to get ahead. But for a man who was homeless at 13 and had to struggle for everything in his life, That's Jimmy liked Jimmy. it that way, and he soon proved everybody wrong. When Derrick Rose suffered a terrible injury during the 2012 playoffs, it opened up minutes for Butler at the start of the next season, and he took full advantage of his opportunity. Jimmy played incredible defense. Jimmy Butler with a uh, yes, Jimmy! Lock and him up! Very few mistakes offensively. In the second half of the 2013 season, when Luol Dang got hurt, Jimmy became a starter, playing nearly 43 minutes per game. In the playoffs, the Bulls unexpectedly won a playoff series, and Jimmy was Chicago's leading scorer and their best player in the second round versus the Miami Heat and LeBron James. At that Whoa. time, Butler proved to be a solid all-around player, but he couldn't create his own shot. Jimmy wasn't a skilled player yet. And his biggest asset was his defense and defense, maximum yep. effort. But unlike Just many similar I players who remain role players all their life, Jimmy had other ideas. He worked harder than 99% of the NBA in order to improve his game and help his team win. In his fourth NBA season, Butler became stronger and more determined to score, while still being the team's best defender and leading the NBA in minutes played. Jimmy's offensive skills grew, and he averaged 20 points per game, getting the call for his the first All-Star game. Yes. But then came the drama. As the Bulls got eaten up by injuries and poor team management, Butler got surrounded by young guys playing for the coach and the franchise that didn't care about winning. Or at least, they didn't care about it as much as Jimmy did, which is something that didn't sit no one well does. with the ultra-competitive Jimmy. His unhappiness became unbearable no for everyone, and Butler was Jimmy. traded to the Timberwolves. In Minnesota, he proved that he's a superstar by leading the Wolves to the playoffs for the first time in 14 years. One second. That's crazy. But they quickly lost in the first round, and Jimmy had the same problem he had in Chicago. He was playing with young guys who cared about their numbers and having a good time, 
players who were laughing in the locker room five minutes after a loss. Jimmy went ballistic, and during one infamous practice, he trash-talked all of his teammates, defeating the starters with a bunch of G League players. Yeah. When you watch like the last chance, the this Jordan documentary, crazy. it was one of those feelings. Like when I look at that documentary and look at Jimmy and he, what he did, so it was crazy. That you told him, Scott Layden, quote, you effing need this me. Just, yeah. uh, a lot of it's true. This was is it the right way to do it? No. Crazy, I, I crazy think that story. I was honest. Was I brutally honest? Yes. If you didn't like the way that I handled myself in, in, in practice, one of the players come up to me. Somebody say something. Anybody. I'm not going to take it offense. It's not personal. Jimmy, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, you, you're probably right. After which he publicly demanded a trade. The next stop was Philadelphia, where Butler played for a half season before good. he realized that the Sixers also are inexperienced. Shoot it. And not serious enough about winning. Over the years, Butler gained a reputation as a troublesome person with a big ego. But the only people he ever had issues with were people who didn't play basketball with yep. manic intensity, who didn't want to work on their game, and who always shifted the blame to someone else. The Miami Heat didn't have such individuals working. Toughest, meanest, most disliked team in the NBA. Coach Eric Spolstra and the godfather Pat Riley have created a team full of guys with a fighting spirit who never give up. And that's what you want from the team. And are completely dedicated to winning. And that's where Jimmy felt right at home. And that's when he reached his final form and shaped his legacy. With Miami, Butler further improved his game, namely his playmaking and scoring versatility. Driving to the hoop was still his trademark, but he also added a reliable floater, a deadly mid-range, and an occasional three-pointer. He also became an excellent playmaker, play who can find teammates in tight spaces, averaging six assists per game. And all of his offense didn't take anything away from his defense, as Jimmy was still doing his usual dirty work. He's not the best defender on the team but What anymore, made Jimmy special and what defined his legacy geez. is not the versatility of his scoring or the greatness of his defense. Jimmy became a Heat legend his, because of his, his winning attitude. leadership and because he always improved his numbers in the playoffs. In the past, he a ton of clutch baskets and became the heart the soul, the muscle, and the bones of the entire franchise. Jimmy. In 2020, against all odds, he pushed Miami to the NBA Finals. Against the Lakers, with a shorthand team, Jimmy scored 40. So much. In the past four postseason trips with Miami, Jimmy always took the team on his back, scored a ton of clutch baskets, and became the heart, the soul, the muscle, and the bones of the entire franchise. In 2020, against all odds, he pushed Miami to the NBA Finals. Yep. Against the Lakers, with a shorthanded team, Jimmy scored 40 points in Game 3 and 35 in Game 5, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with LeBron James and winning both those games for Miami. He became only the third player in finals history to have a triple-double with 40 points, along with LeBron and Jerry West. Yeah, Even though Miami crazy. lost the championship, Jimmy's numbers looked out of this world, and he averaged 26, 8, and 10 against prime LeBron and AD on 55% shooting. In the 2022 playoffs, <laughs> Butler again played like a madman. He put the team on his back once more and was dominant yep. throughout all three playoff series, and then crossing the 30-point mark by one eight times shot. and four times going over 40. Miami was just an inch away from making the NBA Finals lost again. By one but with the shot. Heat down by two in the last 20 seconds of the Eastern Finals oh. Game 7, Jimmy fired. But if he makes that shot, he fires this shot right here. And three that yeah. clunk off rim. If he makes that shot, one of those iconic shots in Eastern Conference Finals history. Iconic shot. Because that was game seven with 20 seconds left doing transition three like that. Oh my god, if he made that, that's insane. Oh, I love Jimmy. He has the balls to do that after shooting like I think it was around 30% for the year from three. He's the balls to do that. Rim. Still, despite the loss, nobody sane could say anything bad about his performance. Not after he scored 47 points in game six and 35 in game seven, playing for a full 48 minutes. And in 2023, after everybody had written off Miami, the number one seeded Milwaukee Bucks, 
Jimmy Buckets, everybody had written off Miami against the number one seeded Milwaukee Bucks. Jimmy Buckets did it again. In Game 4, with Miami down by 12 with 6 minutes left, Butler led a crazy 13 to nothing run, pushing the Heat to a 119-114 win and a 3-1 yeah, lead in the series. Jimmy scored a mind-boggling 56 points, getting buckets in every possible way and playing one of the best performances. Crazy. <laughs> Jimmy. It was the fourth Iconic best scoring player. playoff game of all time. But Jimmy wasn't done there. In Game 5, he poured in 42 points, including a crazy out-of-bounds clutch play to force the overtime. Like countless yeah, times before, he carried the Heat to victory and kicked Milwaukee out of the playoffs. That's when the crazy. Heat made it to the conference finals, ESPN gave them just a 3% chance to beat the Celtics. But once again, Butler proved everybody wrong. Leading the Heat he, to a he Game went up. and winning the Larry Bird MVP trophy in the middle of Boston. All that anybody could say was Jimmy effing Butler, you did it again. Yes, Even though the Heat lost the finals to a superior He's Denver Jimmy team, F. Jimmy Butler, Butler is Jimmy the people's Butler. champion and a true NBA legend. He's my He's my champion. He deserves it. That is a top 75 player all time right there. Minimum. Respect his name.